Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for November 15th, 2020, recorded around 3.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this evening, we have Hurricane Iota, which is now rapidly intensifying, uh, not as quickly as we first thought because of some dry air entrain uh, entrainments earlier this afternoon, but uh, that is now beginning to work its way out, and we are quickly developing a very dangerous situation for folks to run along the Nicaragua and Honduras coastline here, and even well inland could see rain, rainfall amounts uh, that exceed over 15 inches in isolated locations. This is a very dangerous and life-threatening situation. And then later in the week, we will also be watching another tropical wave uh, that is expected to develop a partial of the energy coming right now from the Lesser Antilles. And this partial energy will move into the Caribbean here where it stands a shot at developing into a tropical depression or storm. Only right now, given a 20% chance uh, in this area right now towards the east, uh, really, of Hurricane Iota. Now, if we take a closer zoomed-in look here at Hurricane Iota, you can see a lot of up-central dense overcast. You can see these rotating convective bursts that are clearly rotating here. Uh, one forms here, another forms there. These both rotate around, and they help to close off this eye wall and create a very efficient latent heat release process. Uh, we do have a recon plane that is inbound currently, uh, one left about a couple of hours ago. We have one heading in there and should be in within the next uh, hour and a half or so, but you can see a well-developed central dense overcast, showers and thunderstorms, deep convection, really uh, pulsating right near uh, the center of circulation. That's the eye right there of Hurricane Iota. Again, this is generally moving off towards the west here. We'll be making landfall sometime tomorrow evening. And again, this could be uh, right at Category 4 intensity or just a bit below there uh, by the time this reaches the coastline. So this, unfortunately, will be a very potent hurricane regardless of exact uh, intensity here uh, with time. Now, we can see that, again, the storm has a well-developed uh, outflow pool here. If we took a take a look here... At the water vapor imagery, we can see that this is rapidly expanding outflow in basically all directions here. Even off towards the south, we have rapidly expanding outflow, generally like this, in a counterclockwise fashion. And uh, what this really uh, kind of entails here is that we are, or in a clockwise fashion rather, but we have anticyclonic flow above the storm helping to ventilate it, and we should have a relatively strong storm uh, that is going to be moving into Nicaragua and Honduras within the next day or so. And again, this uh, very large expansive outflow pool is going to help to create mass divergence up in the upper levels. And this should help to evacuate a lot of the air at the surface. And obviously you get uh, dry subsident air uh, that kind of meets in the center while the thunderstorms and all the rising air is just outside of that. So We've seen today from the latest recon plane that was in there, a pressure that has fallen uh, a couple of millibars. You can see here the first pass was 977. The second pass was 975. Now this again is moving very slowly. It's not moved all that much since the last recon plane that was in there. But you notice what, what is occurring here, a very tight wind field. The hurricane force winds are only found in a very small area here uh, around the storm. Now, from earlier, the hurricane force winds were not all that impressive. We had winds that were on the order of about, you know, 65 to 80 miles per hour at the surface. And again, that was the strongest winds were found, uh, not surprisingly, on the northwestern side because the storm is moving uh, towards the west here. The strongest part of the storm is going to be the northwest quadrant because of the forward motion. On the northeast side, you have to subtract wind because it's moving in the opposite direction. Now, one important thing to note here, if we actually take a look at the uh, drop sons that were in there, if, if uh, we can get to it, but if not, that's fine. Uh, but the drop sons that were in there, if we actually go look at the northeast eye wall, uh, at the very uh, surface here, at the 982 millibar level, at the very surface, you had wind here, a north wind, at 62 knots. So this is right below hurricane force, which starts, which starts at 65 knots. So in the northeast quadrant right now, or based on when this drop sound was taken, you would have 62 knot instantaneous wind at the surface. 
If you go just above that at about 969 millibars, so this is, you know, a couple uh, thousand feet up, now you're getting about 82 knots of wind. So this is now starting to get towards the 90 mile per hour threshold, which is where the Hurricane Center estimates the winds are currently at 90 miles per hour. So right above the surface, you're getting an instantaneous wind at, at 82 knots. Now, again, this is not a surface wind, or this is not a one-minute averaged wind, which the Hurricane Center uses, but instantaneous wind of 82 knots. So when you kind of convert that down, that you know roughly converts down to 70 knots. So you're looking at a storm that is certainly intensifying. You get higher wind here in the upper levels, as one would expect, because your strongest winds are going to be further up away from the strongest friction. Now, again, that's very important because what's going to end up happening is if we go back and look here, the thunderstorms right now around the center, that latent heat release process is going to continue. And as long as we don't get any more dry air intrusions or sun uh, changes in the wind shear pattern, we should have the storm rapidly intensify. And again, those winds uh, at least have probably semi-mixed down already. Again, the latest recon plane that was in there was a couple of hours old at this point. So we're still going to be looking for those winds uh, come the next recon plane, which should be in there within the next hour and a half to two hours or so. Now, after this point in time, Hurricane Iota is expected to end up making its way across into Nicaragua and Honduras. Again, we have hurricane warnings for the northeast part of Honduras and hurricane warnings for most of the Nicaragua coastline. And again, even uh, hurricane and tropical storm conditions could extend well outside of the cone here. Again, the cone uh, kind of barely touches the northern coast of Honduras here. But again, uh, you can very clearly see tropical storm warnings are in effect for those areas. And again, what we're going to need here or what we're going to see here over the next couple of days, not need, but what we're going to see is that the storm is going to rapidly intensify and as it does so, this wind field, because it underwent an eyewall replacement cycle last night, or a pseudo one, uh, the wind field is a little bit larger here. You can see the extent of the tropical storm force winds extending out pretty far here from the center. And as this does move inland here, again, this will be creating a wide effect of, uh, you know, a wide range of effects here across a multitude of areas, both in Honduras and Nicaragua, and even to that extent into portions of El Salvador. Now, the low level circulation will be weakening. But that doesn't mean that the mid-level energy will not be, that there will still be some mid-level energy there that will be causing uh, some rough weather there in El Salvador. So certainly something to kind of keep an eye on uh, over the next several days. But either way, very dangerous and disastrous storm surge, heavy rainfall, you know, damaging winds, isolated tornadoes. This is going to be your main threat, especially in that right front quadrant over here. So if the storm's making landfall here, you know, Honduras and the northeast coast of Nicaragua could see some very rough conditions there. Now, if we look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 500 millibar flow. Again, right now, the steering component of the storm, you have a ridge that is generally positioned over the Bahamas right now. And this ridge is creating this westerly wind flow across the storm. So you have a generally, general westerly wind component here forcing the storm into Central America. You don't see any significant troughing that's digging all the way down across here. Uh, your extent of the trough actually is across the Tennessee and Ohio valleys right now. So uh, it's not really contributing to try to pull the storm northward. So a couple of days ago where we thought maybe a stronger storm would actually go more towards the north. Uh, now this has kind of shut the door because this trough is now way towards the north here. So if we progress forward with time, you can see it does gain a little bit of latitude because of beta drift. Uh, and beta drift basically is just when a strong storm is basically going to be tugged in a poleward or northerly direction. Uh, so you do see it does gain latitude here, but again, you have a very stout ridge. Uh, this ridge is going to cut off here. You, you can kind of see where the secondary axis of the ridge is right now over Texas. And this is by Tuesday, uh, early Tuesday morning at one o'clock. Uh, there in the morning and then you have the secondary extension of the ridge over here so you're going to get a separation uh, in this area so there is a little bit of a weakness there and you can kind of see that pinch off uh, but by that time the southerly component here the southwesterly component of this ridge over texas and mexico is going to be too dominant and is going to force the storm generally towards the south 
in west because right now you have a cold front that's going to be dipping down here and what this cold front is going to do is shove a lot of northwesterly wind behind it and that creates a southwesterly steering uh, in this part of the world right here so the storm is just going to dive basically towards the southwest and then move inland you could get another storm that ends up developing here the gfs has kind of been hinting on that and this is the hurricane center uh kind of picking up on that where there could be another storm that develops here this is uh within the five day realm but again if we look here at the upper level wind pattern at the 200 millibar layer, we can see that the upper level wind will generally be one that is semi-favorable, although you are starting to get some trough influence down here, and that northwesterly flow and then the subtropical jet should contribute to a little bit more shear across this region than we have seen in additional days. So thankfully, it looks like that we are going to be quieting down a little bit uh, after Hurricane Iota makes landfall in Nicaragua and Honduras, but we still have a long ways to go, and it looks like the hurricane season could still pump out one or two more named storms after Iota, unfortunately. All right. That being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.